the wings in. Mm -hmm. That looks amazing. They're very spicy. I don't want them. I don't like them. I know. I know you're just a little girl and I have to well, wipe I, your face I, I got time. I got this shit off. <laughs> I have to treat you like a like a baby, but you know. <sighs> I'm gonna need some beer. Be my drink up. this thing shutting off what's going on that is one crazy that's one crazy bug what's the truth oh I don't care I don't care it's funny I know I know everybody's pissed because I didn't give you the money shot of the brisket squirting all over the squeen. Squeen. Squeen? Oh, yeah, yeah, squeen. You know, it's a, it's a squeen, Jeffrey. It's a squeen. And one great thing about cooking the ham in the, yeah, Jesus. Or green bean cast. So much easier just to reheat it in a pit. Well, because you don't want to mees, mees? Obviously, this is a great day. I mean, I'm practicing social distancing, but look at those guys. See, they're practicing social distancing too. Very good. That's a really good social distancer there. Howdy. Hi. See, so you can still go out right in the neighborhood and just walk around. You got yourself some wine. Chardonnay, that is, from wine till sold out. I mean, I can get used to this. I think you can too. Oh, wait a minute. Exhausted. Ah, better. You know, and if you don't want to hold the bottle, the great thing about my new invention is you can just let it go down and you just got the tube sticking out. It works, trust me. We're all gonna be doing this real soon, the way this is going. Don't be afraid right now. Just get yourself a nice hazmat suit. Enjoy the beautiful weather. I mean, look at it, it's gorgeous out today. People are working. Ugh. I gotta stop. Refill. So I'm sure a lot of you are thinking I'm taking this coronavirus way too serious. But God darn it, watch one of my old videos and I'll put it in a link above where somebody sneezed in my face. How terrible was that? Wow, his lawn looks incredible. I don't know if I'm talking too much in this mess and that's why it's fogging up or if I'm running into a cloud of COVID-19. Either way, I'm protected. All right, I better get back to those chicken wings before they burn up. I think my timer's going off right now. If I don't win an Emmy Award for this content, it's rigged. I ain't kidding you. You know when you're cooking at night, the weirdest things pop in your head. Stuff like, there's a skeeter on my, knock it off. There's a skeeter on my, knock it off. There's a one, there's a dozen, you can hear the, Buzzing, there's a skeeter on my Peter, knock it off. You can sing along if you want to. We've all been there, standing alone by our pits while it's raining, just praying we can light a match so we can have a fire. Our main goal in life is to be that husband, that dad, that hero that can provide our circle of life one incredible cook that will satisfy even the worst hunger for Q. So get ready. Ricer is here to bring you peace and end your struggles of failure. He is here to help you amplify your backyard barbecue fun. Oh, can somebody please tell me who wrote this crap? Welcome to Dead Broke Barbecue's Tavern Talk. Now here's your host, Ricer.
Hey everybody, how we doing? You know, today I'm going to tell you, I was I was really happy to see so many people in the chat early. I'm, I'm always watching the show as I'm setting it up, and it was kind of fun to like actually be able to just read a chat and and get a couple laughs out of Charlie's jokes. You know, the, the first one was pretty good, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so how's everybody doing? I'm going to tell you that I'm doing all right. Um, did a cook for on the master built this weekend two of them I actually just got done on like about an hour ago uh, I did a um, just a, a, a test on some steaks just some regular New York strips to see how this thing is uh, how is it working and then I did a brisket a hot and fast and brisket and that was another test and that was kind of a fail um, got a little crispy on me and it, it shot up real quick so i'm gonna have to rethink that process probably and just do a maybe higher temp low and slow because man almighty that thing was it was not good i mean it was okay but it, not what i'm kind of used to let's say so but hello everybody hi how you doing craig i'm going to announce right now craig is the big winner of the clucker so Craig, congratulations. I know you won at least one other time, so good job, but send me a message again so I have your address. But congratulations, buddy. Um, this week we're gonna do, uh, my kid uh, picked out, the youngest one picked out Sugar Daddy. So we're gonna do hashtag daddy later. I'm throwing that out here early in the, um, remember though you have to watch the replay or enter into the replay so you can put it in there. So it'll be hashtag daddy. D-A-D-D-Y, that is. So, but yeah, um, I had a good weekend and I hope all of you guys did too. Hey, Daniel Woods is in the house, man. Awesome, buddy. Cook on the top shelf, hot and fast. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to change that because, wow, <laughs> she was she was like uh, jerky on that fat cap. So it was a little different. But Rick, thank you for joining me from uh, Barbecue and Specialties. Uh, Josh and Babe, thank you for coming in. I'm, I did say hi to Sassy, but we'll say hi to Sassy again. Grumpus on fire. Hey, buddy. Jim from Suburban Barbecue, another fellow Rammstein fan. How's it going, buddy? Hey, Jason, you're not late from Easy Bake Barbecue. You're right on time, bud. Rob, Beer, beer Champ Barbecue. Why do I always want to say Beer Camp? It's so funny because that Beer Camp, that's what we used to call our Deer Camp, so it's so hard. But anyways, how you doing, buddy? Um... What else have we got? Oh, we got Craig from Blackstone Boys. Thank you, man, for joining in. I appreciate it. We got Daddy Dutch, and I know that he cooked a big old hog, like maybe Friday, I think that was, so that was pretty cool. Delana and Wally, thanks for joining in. Appreciate it. Hey, there he is, Mad Horse. I think he's going to see that I'm, whoops, I'm sporting a cap of his, so... Um, yeah, it fits too, you know, it was pretty awesome that way. Jim Taggart, thanks for joining me from Washington. All right, awesome. Very cool. I appreciate you coming in here. Julie, hello, I talked to you earlier. Stephen and Jacqueline, thank you for coming in, my friend. Let's see what else we got. I saw another one. I think I saw Brad in here too. Oh, and Toby's in here. Hello, Toby. How you doing, buddy? Hope you had a good weekend. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. I thought I saw Brad come in here, and but I'm not sure yet. So if you're out there, Brad, thanks for joining, buddy. You know, this week we got a you know I mean, we got a big dog coming in here tonight. You know, we've got Russ Jones from Smoky Ribs and in Southern Cuisine. And um, if I look back at my earlier days of YouTube video watching, I didn't do a lot of it, but I did some of it, and. Uh, I will say that he was one that was always on the list. I mean, he's a big dog. He's bringing like in some insane and incredible uh, videos and cooks. And I think I've talked about him before on my show before, like one of his prime rib videos. Just love that cutting board that he had and all that. But uh, he's um, he is a, you know, he, I mean, he's a granddaddy of them all. You know, he's been doing this for a long time. I know he's, uh, uh, he knows what he's doing. And he's, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the southern coastal type of cooking that he does you know i mean obviously yeah he does just plain barbecue but a lot of times he's throwing in some some different things that you know i might see it at a restaurant but i don't personally know how to cook a lot of that stuff so it, it's going to be great we're going to have a fun time with him and why am i sitting here talking to me when we can get him in right now so let's give russ a call Here he comes. What's up? Hey, buddy. How you doing, man? Doing good. How you doing, Jeff? 
I'm doing real good, Russ. And, uh, you know, I just kind of talked about how you're kind of the granddaddy of them all on the YouTube. You've been doing this for many, many years. And, you know, I, I noticed that you're almost to your second silver play button, aren't you? You're, you're coming on. Yeah. That. I'm within, what, a thousand subs. I just rolled over 199 uh, oh, sometime so during cool. the night, I guess. That's awesome, you know, and like, um, you know, you've you've been you've been in this barbecue business for eight years. Is it is it eight years now already? It's it's eight years this month. Uh, this July month. the twelfth marked eight years. Oh wow, wow, you know, and and when you first started, you know, I kind of ask everybody. I mean, a lot of people in the chat are gonna know you, but for the people that are watching that aren't, aren't very, let's say, familiar with you, tell us just a little bit about Russ Jones and Smoky Ribs barbecue and cuisine southern cuisine give us a little bit of rundown on yourself well i'm a southern boy first off i live in biloxi mississippi i'm from pascagoula mississippi and after hurricane katrina that's when i moved to biloxi i was displaced for eight months but basically just southern boy love to eat love to cook now i do work a full-time job this is not my main gig this is a weekend thing for me Mm -hmm. And uh, it helps pay the bills, but I, I mainly do it not for the money, but just for the pure love of it. You know, because I love to cook, I always have. Mm -hmm. I've had mm -hmm. a passion for cooking, and uh, I this is almost like an outlet to express that. You know, I love teaching people, not not just cooking, but many things. You sure. Know? But uh, I don't know. I guess it'd take you a little while to really get to know me, but I, I'm a good guy. <laughs> you know. <Yeah>, okay. <laughs> Well, your videos, you're always a good guy. And, and, I, and I agree with you. Like when I watch your videos, you're very instructive, you know, and you get into the details that sometimes that other people might not talk about, you know, and I, I always learn something from every video that I watch of yours, you know, and, and I am noticing looking at you right now, are you getting younger? You look a little younger today. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I kind of trimmed this thing up, man. <laughs> You oh, know, that's what it is. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's been like since December since I trimmed this until okay. just this week. And basically what prompted that was at work because of this COVID thing. And uh, it's, it's a big employer. It's uh, mm -hmm. the English shipbuilding there in Pascagoula, big naval shipyard. Thousands of people work there daily. So they sure. screen people as they walk through and they take their temperature they're making you wear a mask on the buses. You know, I take a bus every day into work, and I have to walk out because I work second shift, and I don't get off mm. to 11 a.m. Buses are not running there. But right, right. Long, long story short, they have uh, started making us in the afternoon when we muster up with our crew. Everybody's got to stand six foot apart, Michael Jordan apart. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah you're <laughs> and, right. Uh, everybody has to be masked, so. I, I didn't really mind that. I still don't mind that, you know. Right, but right. One day I walked, you know, I got through and I walked into the office and we have a little mirror there. I just happened to look in the mirror and man, my beard was just sticking out of everywhere, trying to <laughs> talk in this thing. And it, I mean, it, it looked horrible. <laughs> I'm like, uh oh. So I'm like, anybody got a comb here? Let me straighten right, this right. up. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is day in, day out. I'm like, man, this ain't going to work. So I end up trimming it, you yeah. know, because. It don't seem to affect it too bad like it is now. Yeah, no, you look you look good. I mean, like I say, you look a little younger, so you got that going for you, you know? So, yeah. you know, why not, man? You know, and it's always good to change a little facial hair once in a while. You know, every once in a while, I, 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 I always call this my Amish, you know? So every once in a while, I trim up my Amish <laughs> once in a while, you know? So, but... Uh, so, so I kind of told that, I mean, and you and I actually talked a little bit, you know, via text messages that I, I was on my master built yesterday and I, I had a weird cook and it was kind of weird on that whole brisket. And yeah. it actually ended up where the bottom on the fat cap, it was almost like freaking jerky it was pretty stiff so um really? yeah i i won't go that hot anymore on it you know um dan woods yeah, i is, never i never talked to you anymore after we text did you yeah you wrapped it in butcher paper didn't you yeah and i also while. did that too you know and if i would have put it in foil yeah i mean you know or even a foil pan i that would have yeah. relaxed a little bit of, a, of that bottom fat cap but yeah it mm -hmm. was but it was you know when you're doing things on a, on a cooker for the first time 
you know, it's always kind of interesting. And I know that you have one, so I want to I want to yeah. thank you for kind of giving a couple pointers to me on that too. You know, so uh, I, I don't think you've done a video yet. I think you got a couple coming, but uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I got the thing and I was going to shoot a video the first week and I got it and mm -hmm. uh, I was having a temperature issue and I didn't realize it until I was four hours into this cook. I was just doing basic spare ribs <laughs> and I'm four hours into this. I'm like, man, these things ought to be getting pretty close now. I should have some pullback, you know, right. and really it's kind of stupidity on my part. I should have knew, knew to monitor the temperature of that pit with one of my thermometers just to see the difference and make right. sure it's running good and i didn't i just trusted that it would do the right thing you know and so uh after four hours i probed the the ribs and they're still like no they're nowhere close <laughs> they're temping out at 140 no pull oh, back. Yeah, yeah. i'm like something ain't right here and i'm running <laughs> 250 degrees according to it right you right. know so i take uh one of my thermometers, one I trust, put it in there right beside the one that's built into the unit. And instead of running 250, I was running 150. Once I let uh, it settle out, I was 100 degrees off, which explained everything. Right. And most people know my oldest son is my camera guy, and it's getting mm -hmm. close to dark by now. He's like, dude, I got to go. I'm like, well, dude, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, so, right. I end up wrapping these ribs, putting them in the oven just so we could eat, man, and just no video. I had all this footage up to that point bragging on this thing. And I, don't get me wrong, we got it fixed. I contacted mm -hmm. Masterbuilt. They sent me out a new probe. It fixed the problem. Yeah. And I was probably one in a million that that would happen to, but it just happened right. to be me, you know. Right. So I'm not bashing them by any no. stretch, you know. No. Uh, I did a cook last weekend, just a trial run. I did some beef short ribs. And when mm -hmm. I mean short ribs, they come off the plate and they actually cut them short, you short. know? Yep. Yep. And, uh, I did notice, uh, running what I was running. I think I was running 275, man. They cook way too fast, mm -hmm. way too fast. And it tastes like roast beef. So I'm like, and the same thing you was experiencing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 225 from here on out low and slow i've got to play with it a little bit before i actually do a video i'm mm -hmm. sure i'm gonna love it if it'll behave itself going right. forward right. you know i'm sure well i love the whole concept of it man it just yeah gravity fed it's a lot like a pellet smoker but you're able to use charcoal and wood like we do in so many other things you know? right right yep exactly yeah i mean mine was okay it didn't take but it it went from you know let's say 40 degrees when i threw my uh, signals temp probe in there and yeah. to like 150 in like an hour and 15 minutes i'm like okay some what is going on here you know so yeah. you know and I, and I was again like you say when you get a new cooker you want to test it a little bit and and try you know to see where it's at and well that's kind of what i've been doing you know i mean i i did some All steaks right. on it though today man they were freaking phenomenal that thing will sear a ribeye or any type of beef steak and just beautiful so they, they turned out real good now what did you cook anything this weekend did you do much cooking or anything yeah oh. matter of fact today i did uh a video for el yucateco and <laughs> i'm laughing because i re-listened I, I just uploaded all the footage for this video and i was not pronouncing el yucateco right i was saying yucateco i'm like oh no i did not you know i said so i had to sit here on this camera if you watch this video you're going to see that background i had to redo the intro i might have to do some fancy editing because i did not pronounce it right you know but yeah i did uh crawfish enchiladas it's uh a little challenge thing that we got going on through okay. El Uteco, and uh, I'm one of ten creators that are involved with this. And the company sent all of us seven the the seven that they make their sauces. Sure, and, sure. And uh, we're each doing a video, and the challenge is just create a recipe utilizing one of the one of the seven sauces or as many as you want. And I end up using two of the seven, and man, it, it was good. And I, uh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I'm actually sharing that picture. I uh, cobbed that from you in uh, off from Facebook there. 
And it, I'm sharing that picture with everybody is, so everybody can kind of see. And, and they're just mainly a hot sauce company is what I, my guess is, huh? They are. They're out of, uh, is it Yuc Yucatan, Mexico? Okay. Is what it says on our website. They are a Mexican company. They've been around since 1968. Mm -hmm. And I've been seeing them in my local stores like since the 70s. Okay. And wow, I've, I've wow. bought and used many of them. And their whole thing is they're not so much into the heat, mm -hmm. even though they do have some hot sauces, <laughs> but they're more into the flavor of it. Their thing is uh, king of flavor. Okay. You know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, man, uh, that was really good. And so hopefully the video does good. You never know about these things, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. it, it, you, you're, and you're exactly right. You know, with your subscriber base, you obviously have all your, you know, 25% very dedicated fans that don't miss one of your videos, you know? Yeah. So you get that steady view thing, but yeah, for them to take off, who knows, man, it's just such a, you know, it's a, it's a crap shoot. Like they'd say. It is. Uh, so, so, you know, being from the South and, you know, in your, with the, the Southern cuisine, you know, coastal t stuff that you do, um, you're kind of like in a really cool location. If I kind of look at it, you're, you, you know, you've got that good, you know, Mississippi style, uh, barbecue along with the New Orleans little bit of, uh, Cajun style stuff. So, so yeah. when, when you're, when you're doing a video, is this all stuff that, um, that you're interested in eating day, you know, not daily, but like you, you, it's on your menu all the time, or, or are you kind of like now at the point for doing this for eight years, you're kind of searching outward to find different recipes. You know, how, how do you, how do you come about making a video now these with, 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 I don't know how many you got, but it's a blunt bunch, you know? So how do you, how do you kind of yeah. come up with that scheme now? I tell you what, you know, when I started this, I figured it after a while, it was going to get hard to come up with new ideas like you know i'm gonna reach a point where i've done everything that i know how to do <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that has yet to happen in eight years i just keep you know brainstorming on things but but i brainstorm kind of like this this uh thing i did today it's mm -hmm. a crawfish enchilada i'm not i'm not the inventor of that i mean you can google it it's out there sure you sure. know but you know it's a fusion type recipe Mm -hmm. And I've never done that particular one. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, Tex-Mex Cajun Fusion is good, man. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I don't know. It's just, you know, but it's, it, it normally is surrounding around things that I grew up around, you mm -hmm. know, the seafood mm -hmm. and, of course, barbecue, you know. Right, right. Now, right. I didn't really get into barbecue till I left the house. My dad didn't own a grill, never did, definitely didn't own a smoker, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, I've just always loved to cook. So once I left the house and got on my own, the first thing I did was bought a little hibachi grill. Then sure. from there, it turned into a bullet tight water smoker, kind of like the WSM, but it wasn't a WSM, but it was built on the same premise, you know? Right, right. Yep. And yep. Um, I've done that for years. Just I'd invite people over to grill steaks on weekends and then way before YouTube, you know, mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. just any chance to fire up a grill. So, right. Or smoke, you know? thanksgiving turkey ham just whatever right but uh for the most part it, it is the influence i get from this area and new orleans is a big part of that new orleans is only only 45 minutes drive from where i'm sitting right now you sure, know even though i'm sure. Mississippi. and uh so obviously that cuisine that culture filters over into this state you know right right yeah there's and, not a uh, there's not a magic like re, um force field that keeps it out obviously so it's no, uh, obviously you know, yeah yeah and, and the cool thing is is biloxi back in the 1800s you had your aristocrats of new orleans biloxi was a vacation site for them all these oh. old plantation mansions and stuff that still exist here sure. that was your aristocrats summer vacation time so when mm -hmm. they came over here not only did they come but they brought recipes they brought everything with them you know and so from there it just kind of grew so we're very similar in what we do here right. and Biloxi at one time way back you can google this but it was actually the seafood capital of the world it no longer holds that title I don't know who holds it now but <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're still 
very, very, very influenced by seafood. You sure. know, it's very prevalent. So right, right. It yeah, I mean, hand hand. It, that whole Mississippi, the Florida Panhandle, and all that. You know, and all that whole that whole Gulf area is just going to be pushing seafood man you know and you're oh. lucky you're lucky that you're down there because i wish i could get my hands on some of that fresh off the boat type of seafood we just can't yeah. i live you know I, and we, we get a lot of fresh fish obviously but we don't get a lot of fresh you know um uh, seafood salt or, or saltwater fish right yeah right. um i mean because like you talked to me you, you you taught me in your last latest video the the uh, the mullet one you know i never even heard of them before and i'm like i'm like i read it and i said is was he making a funny here out of his title you know <laughs> there's a there's a fish look like it's yeah. got a mullet or what you know but then yeah it's it's, it's you got a lot of avenues to to cook with, you know, different types of things yeah. that you can get a hold of. Um, sure. I, I, I want to bring this up before I, before I ask you your next question, but it was uh, about two months ago, you did a, a, a bone in with the, with the belly, the pork belly um, ribs, the pork belly ribs. Oh yeah. 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 And when I saw that, it reminded me of my when I was a kid at my grand, grandparents' house because they're Norwegian, and that is a Norwegian Christmas holiday uh, meal all the time. Very big in Norway. Now they're not using Daddy Dutch's like uh, uh, rub or anything like that, but they uh, <laughs> you know, they're pretty much just salt and pepper. But right. Uh, but that but that that was pretty cool when you in because I've actually tried to find that. Now my grandpa had hogs, so you know he'd have one butchered for Christmas, you know, or part of it, you know, that would go away for that that type of thing. And you sat there and you pulled all the bones out of it, and it, it was a it was a, a kind of a neat little way to eat it, but. I just remember that it was so, it was like, it was a lot of fat. There's a lot of fat in that, yeah. you know. Uh, there but, was. But yeah. but it looks good. So I, I just wanted to tell you that I saw that and it brought back some memories back when in the 70s when Grandpa would be cooking something like that. So it was pretty cool, you know. So. Yeah. What, what, was, uh, what got me is I had some comments on that video from other countries. I want to say... Norwegian, yeah, like Norway, Norway, Norway New, New, Norwegian, yep, exactly. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and they said that's the only way they can buy them. That they want to buy spare ribs, but they always come with the pork belly. And yeah. over here, all you get is you either get pork belly or you get spare ribs. <laughs> yep. You can't get both. And I only found one source for those, you know, yeah. by my googling or whatever. And I can't even remember the name of the company now, but right, uh, right. I think I listed it in my description box. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, I think I think you said something that you you know in that video something about that that you, you know you had a hard time finding them, but but yeah, you're a hundred percent right. It, it's Nor it's a Norwegian, um, you know, Christmas dinner type of deal. Mm -hmm. It's for Christmas, so and I know that um, 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 when when my grandparents did it, you know, their black pepper was spicy to them, so it's kind yeah. of bland, but it's. With all that fat constant, you know, rendering out and all that, it's really good. Really good soft pork, too. You know, you get into that belly and all that. It's really good. Oh, but, yeah. But the only thing I would do different on that video, mm -hmm. and that was just from tasting them, they were great, but they, they didn't get a lot of smoke because there was such a fat layer on there. Right. The bottom side is the bones. So yeah. I would have definitely trimmed that fat off and try to get into more meat or whatever. But it, Take a little it bit of that might, fat cap off yeah. that belly, maybe. Yeah, was, to get the smoky yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah. It was more of a novelty thing. I mean, yeah. I love spare ribs. You got the meat showing. You can get that smoke in them. And then right. pork belly, of course, you can do the same thing. But together, it's a challenge. You yeah. know? But <laughs> right. they were good. Don't get me wrong. They were yeah. definitely good. Just could have used more smoke. You yeah, know. quite the bite on the bone right there, though. You know, it's quite, oh, quite yeah. a, a huge, huge. So, <laughs> so you know, obviously, um, you've got a lot of cookers. You know, you've got a lot of different types of cookers and smokers and, and grills and stuff like that. Um, I can always ask everybody this. You know, what's your favorite one? What's your favorite cooker that you own? Now, I've said this before, and until something comes along to change my mind, it is the Lone Star Grills Offset Stick Burner, the mm -hmm. Offset. That just, I love that pit, man. It just, 
not just because it behaves so well and I can really dial in those temps. I mean, I can dial in temps either on a Kamado or something like that. Right. But you'll right. never get the flavor off of a Kamado or in my opinion, don't get mad out there, whoever's <laughs> listening, but you will not get better flavor than what you can get off an offset burning just pure wood. Oh, I, on, I on agree a good with offset, you. <laughs> on a good offset, one that really drafts good to where it don't overpower the smoke, mm -hmm. it just it, it's perfect, man. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that pit. Right. Love yeah, it. I, it's it's a beautiful rig for sure, man. I mean, I I. I, I I remember when you went there and picked it up, you did a video when you went and picked it up and brought it yeah. home and all that. And I was pretty excited. Yeah. You know, you had the big, did you add the off-road package to that later? If Or did, I did. you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember when something I, like when that. When I got that, when I got the pit, that was not available. It was available a couple of years later. Okay. And uh, I mentioned it on one of my videos. I actually showed it hoping Chris Goodlander would see it and he did and he sent it to me. <laughs> well, that's good because I mean, yeah. I remember it was a little bit of a challenge for, I think, to get it around to the backyard or wherever you, you know, however your position is at your house. Yeah. I remember there was some, something, you know, that was a few years ago when I watched that one, but, but you, um, you also have that, you know, and I saw it again in that, in that mullet, um, cook that you did, you've got that insulated, uh, cabinet smoker from him. Yeah. Um, yeah. that, that has just always been like a cooker that I want, but it doesn't make any really, you know, reason right now for me to do it. But yeah. man, I bet you can get a lot of pork butt in, in, you can, in that yeah. thing, you know? And that's who buys a lot of that is your people that cater and restaurants and mm -hmm. people like that where, and that's the mini, keep that in mind. That's his yeah, miniature yeah. version. The full size is like that width and almost that width again, same height, I, I believe. Right double the capacity or close to it mm -hmm. so uh well i got on like there ain't nothing many about this and then he eventually come out with what he calls a peewee yeah yeah you yeah. know and i think yeah. that should have been the many many yeah you know? but right uh, right 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 yeah but well, it's a great cooker it's just mm -hmm. i don't use it enough because i've got so many charcoal wood type burners to where and that's got such a capacity, you know, right. I don't use it because normally shooting a video, I'm doing one protein, you know, per video. Yep. It's almost like a waste, you know. Yeah. So uh, I still got it, though. You know, I'll, it, it's a good cooker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, you know, at one time I always thought it'd be great to have one of those just because, you know, when when friends ask me about, hey, can you cook for, you know, a graduation party and all that, and I had something with a capacity on it. But I'm like, nah, just it's, it's something you use very seldom. So yeah. it, it's an investment. But you're right. You know, somebody that's doing, you know, pulled pork and pulled beef and different things for weddings and in the catering side of it. Yeah, I bet you that thing right. just cranks. You know, put a put a good fan control on there and let it let it run. Is let oh, it yeah. run. You know. Yeah. So so um, in your in your eight years of YouTube, what's kind of been the hardest challenge for you? I mean, to f just one simple thing that you always kind of like, this has always been a pain in the butt. What what has that been? Well, I guess <laughs> weather would be the biggest one because <laughs> you try to plan a certain day and I don't have a covered area, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I guess I really, you know, I had bought some pop-ups and Yep. I've done lost every one I bought because I let it sit there a day or two and I should just take it down and put it in the garage. But I said, Oh, it'll be all right. Yeah. Then a big major rainstorm comes in. Whoops. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, I would say weather is the biggest challenge, yeah. you know, and yeah. sometimes work actually because right now we are so busy, especially with this COVID thing going on. That they had what they call liberal leave, and people could just not come in. It was right. totally excused. So they were they are way behind right now. So they're working a lot of overtime. And luckily, I've been able to juggle weekend overtime. Like I work, I'll work Saturdays, and then I'll have Sundays off. Mm -hmm. You know working it out with another foreman. He'll watch my people. I'll watch his on Saturday. And sure. uh, so that's worked out all right. But I would say weather more than anything, you yeah. know? Yeah, well, you know, being down there, yeah, I can see that. You know, obviously, you get something that mm -hmm. whips up off the off the golf, and, yeah, it's gonna, it goes your whole day of planning on making a video. 
you know. Yep, it, that ain't gonna happen. No, <laughs> <today>. no, no. <laughs> And that's and it, like right now, it has been raining for three days because that tropical thing, I think, was supposed to turn into a hurricane, went into Texas. Well, guess what? It swooped right, right by here. Yeah. And we had just had torrential rain for three days. Wow. And I was going to try to knock out two videos today. One for the, the last one for Reynolds Wrap, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. has got to be an outdoor cook. And I was going to do this one for El Yucateca. And that's a pain in the boat when you have to do two because... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot to keep up with, but right. I have done it more than once. And it, it, the video is for August, and we're almost in August, and this would be the latest that I would have delivered a video for them. But, hey, I true. can't help it. Weather is what it is. Yeah, you know? but, yep, yep. And that's 100% true, you know I mean? Like, yeah. um, I've had where, you know, I'm a, I'm a weekend YouTuber myself, you know, and you plan – and then all of a sudden, it's just a dreadful, crappy day. So that's where I kind of went into my garage last winter because I didn't make any videos for a few months last year during football season because I used to coach. And now I'm like planning already for this winter. It's like, well, you'll be back in that corner of your garage sitting there with the garage door open because yeah. if not, <laughs> there ain't no videos, you know. So and it's like you got to deal with what you got to deal with, you know. But no, yeah. 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 So then, um, what's your favorite protein to cook? I mean, really, if you looked at all the different things that you do, what is your favorite? All right. You're talking about whether it's barbecue or anything. Barbecue, right? anything. Yeah. I mean, doesn't matter, right? Okay. I would have to say shrimp, even above crawfish. You know, wow. shrimp would be my favorite. I was raised on it as mm -hmm. a little toddler, you know. <laughs> and uh, I just absolutely love it. That is my favorite thing to eat. Sure. Seafood, so you know? so is, is it like grilled shrimp or do you like it? Uh... Oh, I have no preference. I love fried shrimp. I love grilled shrimp. I love boiled shrimp. I like steamed shrimp. Sure. I just like shrimp, man. <laughs> I'm like Bubba Gump. Yeah, I was just going to say, it sounds like Bubba Gump right there. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. I, far, so I know all there is to know about the shrimp business. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you know, and it's like, um, you know, being in that area, it, it, you can see it. It's like around here. I mean, we're bratwurst, man. Are we I, oh, we yeah. have so many brats around by us. Everybody's making brats all the time. So, you know, I Your cheese I, too, right? Yeah, Wisconsin. yeah, we're yeah, we're we got we're, we got really good cheese. We're spoiled, you know. I mean, I'll go to other states, and it's like, God, you got this garbage, you know. And it's like, yeah. I don't know why, but I mean, I. You, you well, just get if, used to it, you know. You get used to like having cheese around and brats, you know, <laughs> in beer. If you watch, if you watch the video I shot today, it, I'm gonna try to get it out tomorrow. Okay. As soon as this is over, I'm gonna go right back into editing. I've been start. I've started my editing. Mm -hmm. Finally got everything loaded into Final Cut Pro mm -hmm, X. Mm -hmm. And uh, but anyway, on my enchiladas, I use a cheese that I just got in this week from uh, Wisconsin Cheese Mart. Oh, and nice. it's it's not the first time that I've ordered from them, and that's the only way I can get really good cheese just to order it online. But it's a uh, what do they call that? They call it Patron. Anyway, it's a, okay. it's a white it's a white cheddar with te, a Patron tequila and uh, mm. Reaper ghost pepper, not ghost pepper, Reaper pepper in Reaper it, pepper? Carolina Reaper. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's got some fire to it, and man, that's good. <laughs> it's good. That's yeah, some yeah. really good cheese. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we, I mean, like, I think every household in in Wisconsin, almost every one of them has at least pepper jack cheese in there in their in yeah. their fridge. You know, that and Colby Jack, and yeah, I mean, everything has got cheese on it. You know, it's just kind of funny how that works, but you know, it is I what it is, love man. Cheese, man. Yeah, That's I do one too. Of my favorites. Yeah, I, I, I do too. That's why I'm. I mean, I got to have a couple. You know, I'm looking down at my gut. I got to have like three, four, <laughs> three. <laughs> three four pieces of string cheese a day man you know or i'm not surviving you know so see where i got my camera at man yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no gut showing <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly so um i got a question here from from pickles barbecue after so long are there any videos he's done that he doesn't like 
I guess he's talking about the food that I cooked. Well, some like a video that you made that you're just like, uh, you know, I'm disappointed. I think that's what he's meaning. Is there any any video oh, yeah. that you did that, you know, you're like, I, this just didn't work, you know? Yeah, and I'm here to tell you, when you've been doing this for eight years, you've got to kind of just pick yourself up by your bootstraps sometime because after a right. while it becomes almost like a chore, mm -hmm, almost mm -hmm. like a, I mean, it is a job. Yeah. Yeah. But my my son will tell me sometime, I'll start the video, he's like, man, you need to show a little bit more emotion, a little bit more excitement. Right. Hi, I'm Rose Jones. Look at, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. But, but I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? It's like week after week after week, and you can kind of get caught in that little rut or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, there's been a lot of videos that I'm like, I'm looking at it, you know, I'm like, God, I should have done this or should have done that. And what was I thinking? You know, right. that sort of thing. But yeah, more than one, there's, there's been a lot that if I had to redo it and I have redone a few of them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I would do things different, you know, and I'm always learning just like anybody else right. about things, uh, you know, so. Well, I mean, just... in, in we, and you're right, you know, when you just mentioned about, um, uh, Final Cut Pro. That's what I use for my editor, you know. Yeah. And and I when I used to do my football videos for the kids that you know were on my team, and we put all those. I used uh, iMovie. And when I decided that I was time that I was going to do my own YouTube channel, I'm like, iMovie is really good. It's great for doing like a lot of things with it. You can get away with it, but you got to get into something a little heavier. And I went into the Final Cut Pro, and I'm glad to hear oh, you to hear that you're a Final Cut Pro guy because. Man, you know, I mean, it's it's so it's so fun to run. To be honest with you, let me let me tell you, I started with the iPhone four and just an old cheap PC. I don't remember what brand it was. Sure. And it was so hard trying to get video up. That video would crash every time I put the pull pull up the editing software. It right. just couldn't handle it, you know. And the cool thing about Final Cut Pro is it saves as it goes. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I have had it crash a time or two. Oh, yeah. And guess yeah. what? When I pull it up, boom, it's boom. all there. Yeah. You that, know? That... And that was a life changer for me, man. When I got to iMac and got Final Cut Pro, I'm like, yes, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and you're 100% right because, you, you know, uh, uh, sometimes during the rendering process, let's say if you – grab something and move it or something like that you know what i mean it, like a file or a clip and move it it'll freeze up lock up shuts off and you're like yeah. oh please i hope that this is safe yeah it is it's safe for whatever reason it still it saves is. so so um let's see here uh this is from smoke uh, joe's smokehouse and barbecue he says hey ricer tell russ he's making me fat with all his food so there you go buddy <laughs> Hey, I'm doing my job then. Yeah, cool. Right, exactly. Isn't that what part of <laughs> that's part of it, you know? Um so the um when you your other styles of you know, I know that your your uh Lone Star is like your favorite cooker, offset type of cooker. Mm -hmm. Have you had a cooker that's kind of like I don't want to say it's a gadget, but it's kind of like a like a weird little thing, but it really did a great job, you know. Is there any cooker that you've had in that kind of category, you know, where it's like, it's a little different, but it, it really did what it's supposed to do. Hmm. I know uh, I just, I, that just popped in my head because I'm thinking the master built is, I mean, yes, I know there's gravity. I've always say I want a stumps gravity fed, but come on, Jeff, you can't spend $3,500 for, you know, a gravity fed that you're not a comp guy. Or I'm anything hoping like Lone Star Grills gets on board with that type of gravity fed, right. you know, like, like the stumps, not, not the master built thing, even though that's a good concept, you know, mm -hmm. and uh matter of fact, I'm sure there will be other companies jump on board with that and really oh. perfect it, you know, but right. that should right. to be seen. Um, I don't know. I can't think of nothing really. I mean, most of what I own is just other than maybe my boiling pots, you know, I, I use high performance boiling pots that are mm -hmm. different from anything you'll buy at Academy. They okay. have that, that pattern on the bottom that's designed to give you, 50% more use of your propane that's burning under it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of gadgety, you know, I mean, you're not going to find them everywhere. You, you'll have to order it online through only a couple of companies that I know of 
but man, do they perform, you know, yeah. Yeah. it's like daylight and dark. I can take, I had, a. I actually gave that pot to my general foreman and no, I wouldn't Brown knows. And it's just, he lives in New Orleans <laughs> and he does a lot of crawfish. Mm -hmm. And I was wanting that. I, I had a new pot, 120 and that's all I need. It's a 120 quart pot. So I said, Hey, come by the house. I got something for you. But anyway, when I was cooking with that 160 quart pot, halfway up is 20 gallons and I could get 20 gallons of water from cold water to boiling in nine and a half minutes, nine to nine and a half minutes. Oh my gosh. You can't, I'm talking about a hard boil. You can't do that with any other pot. So no, I, yeah, I would say incredible. that's kind of like a gadgety type thing that nobody mm -hmm. else has that really performs. You sure. Know? Sure. I mean, that that's impressive. Nine minutes, um, 20 gallons. Holy crap, you know. And you know what? I'm, I'm always so, when I see you guys do those crawfish boils and all that, I'm always just like so like my mouth is wide open at how much food is involved <laughs> in that, you know. And, yeah. and, and, and we have crawdads up here you know but uh you know you get a little fingernail like uh pinky fingernail of meat in it my kids they always love going down there and catching them all the time but you know yeah. they don't get a lot but the um you know and we can get crawdad you can get them at some of the places around here that sell you know um seafood and stuff but or crawfish but the yeah. uh um i'm like my god how much i mean how much meat is in that pot you know when you see you guys dump it all on the table and all that it's just it's yeah. mind-blowing to a person like myself i'd love to be see one of those for real someday but yeah it's just mind-blowing oh they're it. fun it, it's kind of more of a social thing anyway we got friends and which kind of sucks right now with the covid thing but and i think that's why i didn't do one this year this first year in a long time i did not do a crawfish bowl but i will be doing a seafood bowl this fall oh. just shrimp and crab blue crab you know and sure. uh my ball videos do better than anything i do even though i'm basically a barbecue channel you know yeah yeah and i think that's the uh niche that youtube is set for me hey you need to do ball videos <laughs> yeah right 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 yeah yeah well you know and, and and it's because yeah i see that you get a lot of views on them but that that's cool i mean it doesn't everybody kind of has their little you know niche that they're in you know and it's kind of what you do whether as they say double down on you got to double down on it actually oh, uh daddy dutch asked me to ask you if you need another bottle of his sweet heat his another shaker of his sweet heat if you need any more of that i've actually i looked at it yesterday i was reorganizing this stuff over here and i still got almost a half a container so i'm good right now ken i appreciate it brother that's some really good stuff and I, uh, next time I'll remember that he don't put salt in it. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I heard I heard you say that in the pork belly video that one time, and I'm thinking, yeah, I thought Kent told me there was no. And I have well, I have a little little shaker of it too, and I I promise you, Kent, I've told you this a hundred times. I will I will do it. I will use use your rub, uh, especially now we're kind of I've kind of gone through all the rubs that I have you know sent to me and stuff, so I'm kind of caught up with all that. But uh, but yeah, it, it was kind of funny when I heard you say that. I'm like, well, maybe Kent has two different kinds, <laughs> you know, because I think he has something <laughs> like okay. But uh, so like just let's talk about like you getting things a little bit about it, you know. Okay. You must you must have your door being knocked down by people wanting to send you things. Well, not as much as you think. I mean, okay. I do, but it's not the things I want any part of. A lot of these Amazon links, Chinese people, they yeah. bombard me daily with emails, and I, I look through everything, you yeah. know. Yeah. But I want to work with reputable companies that have a name and that, you know, something I can stand behind, a product mm -hmm. that I really like, a product I really believe in, Right. And not just some spatula on Amazon that was made in wherever, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, 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 I'm right. not doing that. Been there, done that. I did that in my early days. I mean, everybody does. You yeah, know? Yep, but, yep, exactly. Yeah. And, and sometimes I get to the point where I'm almost done with any kind of sponsorships, but then you got certain people that reach out to you and it's like, oh, like Reynolds Rap. Reynolds Rap has been around way longer than I've been on Earth, you know? Yeah, right, I'm right. Like, I said, that's pretty cool. That's a feather mm -hmm. in your hat right there to even, yeah. even be asked, 
you know, from a company like that. So, sure. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, I'm, it, I'm real selective who I'll work with, you know. Well, it's kind of funny. I get a couple, you know, obviously, and it's so it makes me laugh when you talk about the Chinese thing because I always get asked to do stuff that has nothing to do with barbecue, like lights and tripods and all this type of stuff. And I'm like, you know, how am I going to say, hey, guys, you know, let's check out the doneness on this ribeye. But before we do that, I want to show you this really wonderful freaking yeah. tripod that I got, you know, whoopee do. I mean, that's too, that's so dumb, but I get it, you know, I get it. But yeah, that, you know, they, they are kept, very aggressive. They are very aggressive. That's for sure. I kept getting this email and it kept popping up in my junk folder. It wouldn't come into my primary. So obviously they're doing a blast email on this, mm -hmm. sending it to hundreds of people. And anyway, it was for a lipstick collection. <laughs> and I read that and I just moved on. I didn't think about it. And after about the fourth email, you know, we really would like you to to feature our lipstick collection on your channel. And I just stopped. I said, okay, this is it. So I replied back. I said, look, I said, why would a 61-year-old man that has a cooking channel that does primarily barbecue want to feature a lipstick collection? Does that make any sense? You know, <laughs> I said, why? you really need to screen who you're sending these emails to. Now, I haven't got another one. Normally, I just don't reply. You know, I just delete it. But right. they kept sending it, and it is in my junk folder. But <laughs> if, if I have learned to look in your junk folder because you can miss some really oh, good yeah. off. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, but, but, I, and I agree with you on that. I, I that's I yeah. had a couple of them in my in my junk folder too. You know, and it's like just pan it first. You know, if it's the hey, we got a better car insurance one. Well, you can skip past that or better loan yeah. thing or whatever. But, right. it, but yeah, most definitely, most definitely. <laughs> I hear you there. So so when, um, the, and from now until like next year, you know, I ask everybody this, what mm -hmm. is Russ Jones planning on doing to kind of amplify your channel? It, not to like try to get more views or what are you going to kind of do to step something up, let's say, just step something up? Yeah. You know, I used to always keep a plan kind of like, you know, and just here lately, there's so much going on with all this COVID and mm -hmm. work and dealing with everything. I really haven't given that a lot of thought, uh, like immediate changes, but uh, really nothing comes to mind right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and I have done so many things over the eight years. You know, like I said, I started with an iPhone 4, and now I'm I moved into like my third set of cameras, mm. and uh, if anything, probably just try to up my production. I might move into 4K at some point. Okay. I do have one camera that will shoot 4K. Its little brother, the the older model, is not 4K, so I really can't do that because I only use two cameras, and I'm yeah, not going right. for three, four, and five. It's just. I don't have the time or the energy or the patience to deal right. with four and five and six cameras, you know? Right, and I, right. I think two cameras showing two angles is plenty for YouTube. You know, yep. I'm not a yep. major production. That's, that's all you need. Right. And it's right. just make my life a little easier. So I might venture into that, you know, soon. Kind of yeah, soon. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, 4K is a is a beast, you know, and I film all my stuff in 4K. But when I'm when I just started last year, it only made sense to do it because, um, right. you know, I'm I'm trying to be long my videos to be long lived, too, you know, but sure. But the but when you've been 1080p is fine and 1080p is going to be around for three more years. But right. then when you hear scary noises like uh, you know eight or twelve K is out now, you, you know Black oh, Magic Lord. came out. Yeah, I mean it's like I can't even imagine the massive. I mean, how can anybody even try to do that? You know, yeah. I mean four K is is rough enough, and now like the Canons came out with that eight K stuff. Oh Jesus, wow. you know, I mean it's like when is this going to end? You know, it's, yeah, it, it, from it, a from an editing standpoint, all that data, trying to get it, I told you, uh, I think I told you what happened on that one camera that was 4K was doing a shoot, and I never considered, I think, let's see, uh, hang on one second, where, yep, yep. where are those chips? This is my SD card, 64 gigabytes. Right, yep, yep. And I turned a 4K on that one camera, 
just for kicks and grins, and it filled it up before the end of the shoot. I'm like, whoa, we can't go 4K yet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. We were forced to use a single camera after that. We pulled the video off. Sure, but sure. the point is you've got to be ready for it and geared for it and and uh expecting to take the time in editing to deal with all that massive amount of data you know right right yeah and I, it's like i mean when you're when you're ready for it you better buy a couple nice uh external hard drives you know because you're yeah. it's amazing you know um you yeah. know i tell everybody that you know, because I use three cameras and I just, I have two angle cameras and then I have my, my one that I use for like when I stick it in the cooker, you know, uh, right. that one, that one doesn't really build up a lot of data, let's say, but it's a hundred, hundred gigs easily that whole file of that raw, that yeah. raw footage, you know? So when you start looking at that, man, boy, it doesn't take long to, to fill yeah. up some, some serious, <laughs> some serious uh, I can normally bang out a video like at 1080 60 is what I shoot at, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's what I'm at right now. I hope this looks good. How's it? Oh looking? yeah, you look. You look. I think you look awesome, man. Yeah. I good, told man. everybody in the family. I said, turn off Netflix. Turn off your computer. Turn off your iPhone. I need all I can get. <laughs> <laughs> it's only for one hour, so yeah, you know, right, just right. Deal yeah. with it. Yeah, yes. I, I tell my kids the same thing. You know, I say, okay, boys, no Xbox, you know, no Xbox. Yeah. You can be on your phone, but no Xbox. So right. out of your cooking, you know, not just the shrimp part, what is like your favorite like style? And what I kind of mean is, are you, you know, like on a, what's your, yeah, I mean, I just really kind of, what's your favorite style of barbecue cooking? Is it the low and slow, hot and fast? And when you're doing it, what's something that you kind of, from just learning that you, you that you might add that other people don't? Do you have something okay. like that? You, I mean, I mean, this well, is a big, broad question, but I'm kind of just asking: yeah, when you're cooking, is. you know, for you for your family, what's something that you? I mean, you just love doing. You just love doing, and and you kind of call it your own. Well, for, as far as barbecue goes, mm -hmm. definitely low and slow. Mm -hmm. uh, I've tried the hot fast thing with brisket and things like that. And now pork, like pork butt, I'm not scared to, you know, 275 tops. Mm -hmm. It's a very forgiving meat, lots of fat. Well, so is brisket, you know, other than the flat maybe. Yeah. But, right. you know, that's about the limit on the temperature I'm going to run is 275. But... <sighs> I tell you something I've been trying to duplicate for years, and it's the barbecue that I grew up around right here in South Mississippi, these little road stand barbecue mm -hmm. shacks. These old black men used to run these things, you know, and man, that was some of the best barbecue I have ever had. And they right. I, I think they smoked with hickory. I'm thinking back before I even did all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I've been trying a few times that offset comes so close to what it was and they had the wood cookers like that, you know. The sure. offset it's pretty close to it. But uh the only thing I guess on that last part of that question that I do different is I do try to like when you got a protein and it's got fat your rub has got salt. I do try to put some sort of acid on that, whether it be in the rub or or whatever, you know, the mm -hmm. mustard, the Worcestershire, whatever. But when you hit, when you combine that acidity with the salt and the fat, that's right. where you really get that flavor, you okay. know. Sure, and, sure. And if it's missing one of them elements, it's going to be like anything else. Without salt, everything would be bland, you know. Yeah, right, right. So salt and fat works good, but when you add that little bit of acidity to it, it really pops. You know, I think that's why hamburgers, you know, you, you doing your meat, you got your condiments, whatever, but they always put pickles on there. And I think it's that little bit of acidity from the vinegar. It just all comes together. That makes it a better experience. You sure. Know? Yeah. yeah I can that, see that. Yeah, that's true. Really with any cook and any recipe, mm -hmm. you need that acid thing in there, you know. But am I making any sense at all with that? No, no, you, you are. I mean, and again, that, that that was a question, like I told you before when we had our little chat, yeah. I wing everything. So if something pops in my head, I throw it at you. So, you know, sure. but like uh, the, um, but yeah, 100%. I mean, like, um, what is that, acidic acid? Um, 
citric acid is that what is what it's called is that yeah like uh sure and there's so many there's so many um things that are acidic that are Mm -hmm. considered an acid you know Mm -hmm. all your lemons limes things like that pickles got to vinegar vinegar in itself so normally when i do any kind of low and slow i'm going to put I don't always, and there's a lot of videos where I didn't. I just didn't feel like it. That's where I was getting lazy again. But I do use a mustard <laughs> yep, or yep. Worcestershire or something just to give that little bit of acid kick, and it sure. makes such a difference. You know, a lot of people say, "Why do these taste better when I put a mustard binder on there than when they don't?" That's why it's, it's got the acidity in it. That's yeah, it in a nutshell. You know. I've I've never heard anybody say it quite like that to be honest with you. You know, I yeah. mean, I t- typically hardly ever use a binder, but I might just try it just to see what that try that it. does. You know, I used to always use uh, yellow mustard on my ribs all the time, but I, yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. I started getting lazy, and I'm like, ugh, you know, I don't yeah. sit here and deal with this. You know, so just and you eat them, mess. they're good. But I'm telling you, man, you you add that to it, all of a sudden it's like, bam! It gives you that wow factor, and yeah. that's what's doing it. You know, a lot of people don't realize that. But that's exactly what's doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, um, you guys got some questions for Russ. We'll throw it at him. We're starting to get down to the countdown. We got to make sure that he uh, has a little time to relax and do his rest of his night. But uh, you guys got any questions? Throw them at me real quick. You know the. Uh, there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got to use my my extra set of eyes once in a while too. You know, but uh, um, so when you um, <clears throat> you know, th- th- is there any um, th- do you have a dream cooker other than your Lone Star? Is there a cooker that you just really, really would love to get your hands on? If money was no object, I know everybody always says that. If money was no yeah. object, is there a cooker that you would love to get a hold of? Wow. The only thing I can think of off the top of my head, Justin over there at Baby Back Maniac, now he has the Lone Star Grills all mm-hmm. set, but he's got that warming oven on there for like sure. when things get ready before the other thing gets ready, right. goes in there. I love that pit. That is a serious pit. <laughs> and uh, if anything, it would just be an upgrade from what I currently have with my all set. It would be a, a better, more badass <laughs> cooker. Smoker. Yeah. 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 And that, that'd be it probably. I, I would sure. definitely stick with Lone Star Grills. Yeah. No doubt. Yep. Yep. Uh, we got a question here from Pickles Barbecue again, Charlie. He says, Russ is making his own rub. How did he decide to do that, and what's his plan with it? Oh, you know, I bought a dehydrator sitting right over here, and I had it running earlier. I'm trying to dehydrate jalapeno peppers, cut them in half just to hydrate, and it got so freaking hot in here, I turned it off earlier. So I'll fire it back up when I leave out of here later tonight. But... um I don't know. I just got into dehydrating onions and garlic and all these different things and started mm-hmm. putting like a Cajun rub together. And uh, Mike Petrie over at Heaven Made Products, he reached out not long ago, which I've worked with Mike in the past. Mm-hmm. I've got videos that are two and three years old where I've used his rubs. And sure. he's actually contacted me in the past about doing a rub that he designed and uh put a label on it, call it mine. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I said, if I ever decide to do that, I want it to be my rub right. yeah. that, you know, and I said, the marketing part would be fine. I said, we could do it from your website or whatever, but I don't want to put my name on something that I didn't have something to do with. Right. So I designed this Cajun rub. It's really good. And he, he got the recipe off that video it did. And I can't remember which one it was, but anyway, he tried it. And I asked him to tweak it. So Mm -hmm. he sent me three versions of it after he tweaked it. And uh, I don't know how he tweaked it, but if we do this, you know, for real, Mm -hmm. then I would definitely want, not that I would give it out, because I am good about and bad about giving things away on YouTube. A lot of these, matter of fact, I gave that recipe away for that Cajun rub, but not after he tweaked it. Yeah, he's right, got right, some right. Se- he's got some secret ingredients in there that I would not give out 
if right, we were right. going to sell it, you know. Yeah, but, exactly. So, but I would want I would want to know exactly what goes in it in case something happened to him, especially if I invest a lot of time and energy into that. So, I would yeah. have to know it. It would be under lock and key, though. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a. I, I wish you luck on that. That's pretty exciting. You know, yeah. I, I want to do that someday myself. But, you know, again, it's always time and, and effort to do it, you know. Sure. Uh, uh, Quester J says, if Russ needs a guest for a video, I'm right up the road. So he's just letting you know that he's right up really? the road. So, yeah. Oh, His name is cool. Quester J. So, um <laughs> <laughs> he's a good guy. I've known him for he's been a, a subscriber of mine for a long time. So awesome. uh, I, I know him real well. So he's a good good cat. Uh oh. we got here um Uncle Steve Shake. What is the one th big secret advice that Russ can give on cooking? Secret advice? Yeah. Uh, wow. I don't know about secret, I meant. <laughs> I would like to answer this, but I really, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, I don't know. Do your research on whatever it is you're cooking for one thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're new at cooking, whatever, it does help watching cooking shows, cooking channels, whatever, until right. you really can grasp what's going on. And mm -hmm. cooking is an art form. You know, it's just not something you can just... I mean, unless you're making a grilled cheese or stuff you grew up with or whatever, if you're going to get right. serious about doing something, right. it takes time. It's like a trade almost. you got to learn it, you know? Mm -hmm. And there is no one particular thing really to it. it it's, you know what I'm saying? Chefs no, 100, 100%. Are, a chef is, is trained. I mean, he goes to culinary school, and, and they teach all these different things. It's just... There's not one secret thing that I can think of that <laughs> can make you a better cook. It's a combination of everything, and then you put it in your brain, and then you roll with it from there, you know, and you apply it to basically anything you cook, if that made sense. I, I'm going to just add to it because you kind of said it. It's like practice, you know, get yeah. to learn, you know, get to learn what you're doing. I think that's always been the secret. You know, it's like even... I still, I mean, I make good ribs. I can't say I can't make good pork ribs because I make good pork ribs. But there is when you start to really have done it enough, you can tell by just touching those ribs with your hands oh, that yeah. they're done. You can just grab them and you said that yeah. these are done. You know, right. you don't even have to have any fancy thermometers or anything. You can just no, you just know. touch them and you know them, you know. And and that's one exactly thing, right. you know, it's kind of even like with brisket, you can just look at it sometimes and see, you know, okay. <laughs> you know, yesterday yeah. is a prime example for me. It was like, this looks good, but this is going to suck, you know, and it ended up kind of sucking. But, oh, well, we'll, we'll get the next one, you know. Uh, uh, Joe's uh, Smokehouse and Barbecue again. What do you think of uh, Lone Star's new pellet smoker that they're going to be coming out with in this fallish? it sounds like? What do you think of that thing? I'll let you know just as soon as it's delivered. There I'm supposed go. to be getting one, so <laughs> we'll we'll go. see. Yeah, I uh, I'm excited for those guys to do that and step into that market too. To be honest with you, I think it's uh, um, it's it's nice that there'll be another American-made high-end type of pellet grill. It's not going to be everybody in in their brothers going to want one. Uh, because the they're, they're, when they first start out, you know what I mean. Yeah. But when they actually start making them, and if you've had a couple pellet grills, I mean, you know that everybody's going to step out and, oh, and yeah. you know, let's get one that's going to last well, hundred years. You know. I will say this, and I know Chris Goodlander, and I know Long Star Grills. He's not going to throw nothing out there until it's ready. Right. And. Right. He he sent me an email telling me all the bells and whistles of this thing and the company he's going through, which is Fireboard for the mm -hmm. brain of this thing, which mm -hmm. is a USA company, right. and just everything about it sounds so good, you know, and he's just not going to release it until he knows it's ready. Mm -hmm. He's not going to make that mistake, yep. and uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic product once we get our hands on it. But that's yet to be seen. But I have all the confidence in the world that yeah. it's going to be a, a good one. You yeah, know? yeah. It, it, you know, it's uh, it it really showed that it, it when he was going through the whole board part of it and trying to get the board and and 
And then he about faced and, and cut that other company out of the mix and, and went to another company, yeah. which made him not be able to put this cooker out as soon as he wanted to. But that shows you he isn't going to just put out anything. If it's not going to be no. 100% his liking, he's not going to do it. So that's pretty impressive. You know, because if, he, if it's not out until the fall, you know, really, if you think about it, that's a next year cooker for a lot of people, you know. Sure. So, so I mean, that, that takes balls and that takes confidence in his, in his production and what he re- requires oh, yeah. for, for quality. So hats off to him, you know. Absolutely. Um, Carl Howard, Howard says, what does Russ think is the next best thing to do in a pit barrel cooker besides ribs? Pit barrel cooker other than ribs. Well, I pretty much have retired the pit barrel cooker. I had the gateway drum smoker, 55 gallons to the 30, like the pit barrel cooker. And you just never know when I'm getting ready to put on that puppy. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, the pit barrel, the firebox is about burnt out on it. And I just can't see myself. If, if I were to do a video, it mm-hmm. would probably be the pit barrel cooker versus the gateway. And that's yeah. a possibility that that might be my final video with the pit barrel cooker. Okay. And, sure. uh, and if not, then I've done all I'm going to do. You know, I really like that gateway. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty one. That's for sure, man. You know, um, Grumpus on fire is asking, is there any protein rust just won't cook or eat? Liver. Liver. Okay. Yeah. That's 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 always been one of that I always push back. You know, when we, back in the seventies when I was growing up, I think my dad had liver and onions every week, you know, so now it's oh. like that's the last thing that I want to eat, man. Yuck. <laughs> Yuck. My mom um, used to cook that in the house. I could as soon as I walked through the door I'm like, Oh uh, no, she's cooking yeah. liver. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I have the same <laughs> feeling, you know, and like my wife will make it once in a while. Now I like liver pate. I don't know if you ever had that before, but I like that. It's like a, a spread that you put on a cracker. That's good. But regular liver and onions, no. It's really hard for me to eat that. Yeah, I, calves I, I, liver, man. I just can't. It's too strong. But now that is when I was a child. I haven't tried it as an adult. Maybe my, that's changed. You know, mm-hmm. my taste has matured, but I still think back as a child on that. But um, chicken livers, I don't have a problem with. I can eat those, you know. But yeah, right. Calves yeah. liver, no. Uh-uh. Yeah, it's. I, and again, I, I'll, I'll tell you that liver pate is really good. It's this creamy, good stuff that you can put on a cracker when you're like waiting for your, uh, what was like at a, up here around this area, it's always at a salad bar. They always have it in the salad bar. Yeah. So it's good. But, but yeah, regular liver, barf, you know. Well, you know, boudin, which is a Louisiana thing, it's like a mm-hmm. sausage yeah. That it's got rice and all these different ingredients of pork or whatever. It yeah. has pig liver in it, pork, mm-hmm. pork liver. And I've, I've done a version of that done with chicken liver because buying a whole pork liver just can't be done around here. I don't know of anywhere. I know in Canada, a buddy of mine up there, Blake, he, he can buy it in a supermarket. Mm-hmm. I've never seen pork liver in a supermarket, but mm-hmm. that's what it calls for. Yeah, I yeah. can't detect a liver in that. There's so much other stuff going on. I can eat it all day long, you know. Sure, sure. But uh, uh, it's, go yeah, ahead. it's it, no. I was just gonna say, yeah, I, I agree. It's just nothing that really is. You know, but in sausage, I could see that being good. To be honest with you, grind it, grind it up a little bit of liver yeah. in there along with everything else. Yeah, I mean, in, in small quantities, and if you don't notice it, I think it's okay. <laughs> You know. Yeah, my mom used to do these calves liver, and it was the whole yeah. freaking thing right there, yeah. you know, yeah. with just onions and gravy. And it's like, uh, yeah. the gravy looks good, the onions look good, but could I have a hamburger or steak under that? Or... Right, right. Can we do Salisbury <laughs> steak instead? Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, Julie Gilpin is asking, what's the strangest thing you've ever grilled? Strangest thing I've ever grilled? Oh, now, I can tell you what I'm getting ready to cook here very soon that might freak you out because I haven't really done anything very strange that I can think of. Now, I have smoked beef cheek. Mm-hmm. I have done beef tongue, lingua. Mm-hmm. I've done all those within part. I think it was last year I've done those, but it hadn't, it hadn't even been a year since I've done both of them. 
Beef sure. cheek is excellent, by the way. But uh, I was inspired, what I'm getting ready to say, by an episode I've seen on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Yeah. Guy Fieri. And it's uh, duck tongue tacos. <laughs> I've got them in the freezer. They got delivered this week. Duck tongue tacos. So wow. we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. I have never heard. I and mean, there, there must be a bunch of duck tongues in there to be able to make. Like, oh man, three, the four package! Tongue. I got, I bought two pounds of them, and I said, "Well, <laughs> either it's gonna get a lot of clicks, or it's not gonna get any." That's the gamble you take. <laughs> That's you know? right. Well, it's intriguing, so hopefully it does. You know, you know, put yeah. a big duck tongue. You know, put Daffy Duck on there on that thumbnail, sticking his tongue out or something. You know, question mark. There you go. So good, good idea. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. After watching the video and his reaction, I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna try that. Yeah. And so I found the source. I don't remember if they no. They didn't say where where it came from. I found it kind of like I did the ribs with the pork belly on yep. there. Just yep. through searching, you know. Mm-hmm. And I found it. And I'm like, ooh, there it is. So I ordered it. It's it got here this week. So that's coming up fairly yeah. soon. No, oh, that'll be cool. I'll, I'll I'll make for sure. I I look forward to seeing that one, man. You know, that's yeah. that is interesting. Uh, Steve Hart is asking, what is your best way to smoke a steak? Well, I wouldn't say I, I really smoke a steak. I do a reverse sear, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, I guess it's getting a little bit of smoke, but it's really more of a grilled thing, you know. Right, right, so I don't right. add smoke wood or anything to it. But, uh, God, there's all kind of ways. I love doing it on a Santa Maria. I love mm-hmm. doing it on the Weber. Uh, how else have I done it? I've done it on the Lone Star Grills offset on the firebox. I've done sure. steaks on there. Uh I've done them on the Kamados. I've owned, I'm on my fourth Kamado, wow. different brands, but I'm on the, I got the S and S Kamado now. Yep. Yep. I haven't used it in a while, but I've got it. Uh, I can do them on anything, but it's basically the same thing. My preferred method of steak is a reverse sear. And occasionally I will do a front sear if it's a thinner steak, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, not mm-hmm. grocery a store reverse steak, sear. Yeah. I, I go inch and a half to two inches. If it's more like a one inch, three quarter to one inch, I'll sear it first, maybe throw it on a cool zone, just temp it, then I'm done. You know, yeah, it yeah. really depends on the thickness of it. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I do reverse sear steaks, but it always seems that when we pick up steaks, it's like we're, we're on our way home from work. Okay, my wife or I will go and get some ribeyes. Well, yeah. there's no time. You know, I don't want to sit there and wait. So I do the crazy hot and fast, get that cooker up to 500 plus and, right. you know, four minutes aside, and we've got some decent medium rare, medium steaks, yeah. you know. So, but yeah, that's, that's good. But yeah, I mean, yeah, a reverse sear on a, on a, on a thick chunk of ribeye is delicious for sure, man. For oh, sure. Oh, yeah. That's my preferred method on thick cut, but. I can remember back when I was married to my last wife and uh, we ate steak a lot because she loved steak. I liked steak. And all I had was a little Weber 18 inch. What do they call it? The big Joe, the little one. Jumbo Joe, the jumbo. Jumbo Joe. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. it. And it, and she actually owned a grill. She had it when we got married and she'd buy these steaks. Would you mind cooking these, you know? And, I go out there and cook them and bring it back in. You overcooked it. I said, what are you talking about? It's medium rare. She goes, you overcooked it. So the next time, the next time I said, oh, I'll get her. I seared that puppy one minute, one minute, flopped it on a plate. And I mean, it was raw in the middle. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it really was. Purple. Yeah. And, and I went ahead and cooked mine, you know, the way I like it. And uh, brought it in there. I said, well, what do you think? She goes, oh, it's, oh, perfect you do i'm like okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, you, you know it, it is kind of funny like because like i used to be always ordered my steaks rare all the time i used to always mm-hmm. because i knew that they would come out medium rare well right. i think i think the steakhouses around this area have gotten better you know either better equipment or whatever they're doing they're at least learning how to make us st- and i don't go out for steak much but you yeah. know i mean it's <clears throat> you know why go get something like my wife won't she goes she won't even order a steak at anything because she goes well yours are always better and it's just because we're using a lot more 
salt and pepper and in ice cream on top of it you know and stuff like that to make that really yeah. tasty you know so right but you know the um um i have noticed that if when i was ordering rare they were really rare so it's like okay so a couple of these steakhouses that we you know every couple of weeks we'll go to one or the other I order medium rare now and then, you know, so it's like something's happened where they either got better. They got people that really understand what medium and medium rare is, but exactly. somebody, so, you know, I, <clears throat> some people, they'll, I mean, if it's mooing, they'll still eat it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, it's, and I, that's fine. You know I mean? I, I'd, I'd rather see that than well done. My grandma was always a well done. I'm like, I can't even make you a steak grandma. I can't even watch you eat this. So, I, I mean, it was hard, you know, and she's Just a wonderful woman. give her a woman. bag of beef jerky, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Call it a day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, my, throw my flip-flop and throw some salt and pepper on there, you know. Mm-hmm. Here you go, Grandma, you know. But, but yeah, exactly. yeah, everybody's different. So, well, Russ, I think um, I, I'm, I, I took you over about 15 minutes, and I appreciate you. Oh, that's a cool, longer, man. You know, I've so. had a great time. I hope well, everybody else has. Oh, yeah. I mean, the chat's been going wild. Uh, I really appreciate you coming in, man. And I look forward to keep on talking to you. And hopefully someday when you get that new uh, pellet grill, I would love to have you come on. And even if it's just for a quick little 15, 20 minute talk about it, I'd love to have you come on because I know a lot of people that do know that about this cooker. They are excited Mm -hmm. to see it, you know, so, so hopefully. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, I I bet, I bet, you know, so, but again, I really appreciate you hanging out. I'm going to talk for a little bit uh, by myself. So if you want to jump in the chat, if you feel like talking with some of these people, I know they would love it. If you got time, sure, hop in there for a little bit, but if not. I appreciate you hanging out with us tonight, man. This was this was awesome, and it was a, a big pleasure and an honor for me to have you on. So I well, appreciate I that. appreciate you inviting me, Jeff. I really do. And uh, I guess I once you close this out, I just pull up the YouTube window yep. and I yep. can join yep. the chat. Okay, yep. cool. It's exactly how you do it, buddy. So all right, all right, awesome. man. We'll talk to you soon. Later, later, bud. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, there we go. Now that was one heck of a heck of a conversation for sure. We got to give him a round of applause. And we got to give him the bicycle horn. I mean, he gave us a lot of great information and we might as well give him the DJ horn too. Yeah, new toys, new toys. So that was awesome. I mean, uh, Russ is a real, real, real champion when it comes to the whole um youtube thing you know he's kind of uh, a pioneer if you want to say because if you look back at it the eight years you know 2012 i mean youtube was a lot different back then and you know it's really just really super cool to hear from a guy that's going for a second silver play button you know we know a couple of those guys that are out there that are big channels and all that but for all of us to be able to come on in and have a, a conversation with him was cool so Oh, there he is. He's in there now. So we'll add a little bit of music here. Uh, Or wait, you know, I got to do this. Everybody's going to complain because last time I didn't do it. So, all right. Well, now it's a perfect time for all of you guys to go, you men and ladies, head to the restroom and relieve and uh, refill. So here we go. A little pee break polka for a little bit. I need to get something in the background, though, for everybody. So something like, you know, some little dancing clown or something. German guy with some later hose on.
Well, thank you, Brad. I seen it uh, the other one earlier. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate the super chat. It helps a lot. Hey, uh, Joe, I want to answer your question. I actually did use the butcher paper, and I did actually have two folded underneath it. You know, if you look at it by the time, there, there was a little bit of protection. I think it was just because I started out so damn hot and fast on that master build that um, she crisped up and it stayed crisp. <laughs> if I do it low and slow, butcher paper easily, but man almighty, that thing just was like, it was like jerky. Just the fat cap part, but still, you know, about a quarter an inch or so on the bottom, just on the flat. Point was okay, Super. but you know, gotta kind of mess around with that crap and try it out and see how it rolls sometimes. And you know, new cooker. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna blame myself yet. But I think, I, like Russ was saying earlier, I'm gonna run that thing at like 225, 250. I'm not. I mean, I can hot and fast in a barrel, but I'm not hot and fast in that thing. Till at least, unless, unless you know, and I never put my signals in there. So I don't really know what that that was running at. So maybe where his was running 100 degrees lower, maybe mine's running 100 degrees above because I've never had a brisket go from like 40 to 150-ish in one hour. One hour. <laughs> I thought I had a bad probe. Pulled the probe out, put a brand new probe in. No, it was still there. And I'm like, okay, well, at least I know I don't have to go buy a new, you know, another probe. But yeah, weird, weird, weird cook yesterday. But boy, did it have some frickin' bark on the on the on the regular side, on the, not on the fat cap side. Um, man, that was it was it was good. <laughs> but if I had a better uh, electric knife, I would have went ahead and just sliced the bottom part off, and it would have been okay. But I just gotta keep keep on messing with it, you know. Yeah, I, I'm going to say the same thing, Grumpus. I'm a little better, I think, at the low and slow stuff. And, you know, I know it's it's cool to do those hot and fast. But like I say, most of those comp guys are doing the hot and fast stuff in, uh, um, in, a, in a barrel, in a, uh, an ugly drum, you know, and all that. Or a gateway drum like Russ has. And, yeah, they'll push them. They're running 300, you know. But I know Darren, he was in here a little earlier. I don't know if he's still in here. Um, he's had really good luck with all his hot and fast cooks. Me? No. But, whatever. Oh, uh, new style, gotta learn it a little bit, but, or new cooker, and gotta learn it, but, yeah. So I hope everybody had a wonderful, uh, enjoyable listening and viewing, uh, with, uh, Russ and I. Yeah, he, uh, he mastered everything for sure on his audio in his video because when I talked about having him come on he wanted to add a few different things and wow it looked great Russ it looked really good buddy <laughs> please do a shout out for me this is from Julie want to thank you for you all for sharing what you do my brisket cook yesterday was a bit was a bit thanks it was good i hope um and she's and she says to all you great people oh good i saw your pictures you know your husband looked like he was busting hump so it looked good to me so good job you know that's all that matters it's all about oh it was a hit okay did i not read that correct oh yeah it was a hit good good yeah i mean it's fun it's fun you know Good night, Quester. Thanks, buddy, for <laughs> thanks for joining in, and good luck with them liver and onions. <laughs> so, yeah, it, there there is that certain stuff that people just don't like. You know, it's like me. I can't get enough of pickled herring. I mean, if there's a jar of pickled herring in here, it's gone in a day, and everybody's mad at me because like, why only get like two pieces? Well, it's more than you should have gotten because I want it all. You know. But uh, it was fun. It was fun. So good times uh, with the with Russ in there talking about liver and onions. <laughs> well, there's Jimmy Q. How you doing, buddy? 
And we got Laura from Cypress Blue. How you doing, young lady? We got um, Kathy Stevens. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate that. Saw a couple other people. Papa Texas, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining me, man. I appreciate it. Sean, how you doing? Oh, we got beer, barbecue, and baseball. You guys uh, looking for a podcast? Go head over and check those guys out. I, w- I did an interview with them uh, last two weeks ago. Uh, I'm probably going to post the interview on my channel. They sent me the file, so I'll put that up here shortly. And we'll have that on there. You guys can uh, meet Len and Jeff on there. They did a great job of asking me questions that I could answer. <laughs> And they and I had to apologize after I got done. I said, sorry, guys, you know, me, you just wind me up and I'm going to talk forever. Even if it doesn't make any sense, I'm still going to talk. So I think that's one of my specialties. See what else we got in here. I saw a couple other. I'm pretty sure I said hello to Joe. Thank you, Joe's from Smokehouse and Barbecue. Yeah, this is kind of a little bit of that southern swamp music, you know. This one's for for Russ tonight. Yeah, he's uh, he's got some pretty cool cookers. So if you guys haven't actually, you know, I'm going to say everybody in here is subscribed to him. But if you haven't and you're not, uh, head over to his channel because he's got a lot of cool things, man. A lot of cool things. Can't believe it's already Sunday. Damn, weekends go by too fast. I agree, Darren. I've always been like one of those activists for like a three-day weekend and then four days of 10 hours. I think that's a much better idea. The world would be like maybe like a little easier. Land shark. That must be a beer. Oh, yeah. It is. <laughs> that's right, Sean. Swamp pop pop music. <laughs> yeah, I love four tens too, man. Sometimes I can, sometimes I end up doing it because I travel so much for my job, um, you know. So it works out okay. We got. I'm a little bit out of the chat. Yeah, Corona. Corona beer is just. I only drink it because I love limes. That's why I tell everybody. Beer is okay, but I love the limes. You can't drink it without it, you know. So what else did some of you other guys do this weekend? I hope, like, you didn't all have bad weather. You know, Russ was dealing a little bit of stuff, but... Um, I hope that all you guys were able to get out and crank up one of your grills or do some type of cook. So throw them in the chat. Let's talk about it. I want to see what you guys actually did. I know Julie and her husband, they did a really nice brisket on their offset cooker. They had an offset there running it. Pretty sure. It might have been a pellet, but I can't remember. <laughs> you know say that I know something hot and humid oh yeah I know I know Brian yes I know you did like an 18 hour um, brisket there man that's pretty crazy but yeah it was hot and crappy here too cooked wings and legs yep I saw that Charlie that was awesome I know daddy Dutch did a whole uh, on Friday a whole pig that looked pretty impressive All right, Darren had a big party. Crappy weather, yeah, pan smoked mac, pan loaded mashed taters and pulled pork. That's always a good meal, buddy. That's always a good meal. Grilled some, Ray grilled up some kebabs, cool. (laughs) There's a little truth to that, Joe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> something very exciting stayed home yeah dang it I agree man yeah Brad I saw that I saw that you did a uh, meatloaf that's cool turned out for your first time that's always awesome 
There you go, Julie. Yep. Hey, it's all kind of sometimes just checking it out, you know, and you get the feel for that. You know, I always tell everybody peanut butter. You know, stick your probe into peanut butter and then go out and check your brisket. If it feels like that, done. You burnt up some ribs? <laughs> Grumpus burnt up some ribs. A hot and fast thing. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. Buffalo chicken jalapeno poppers. That sounds dang good, buddy. Way to go, Craig. I'm a little behind on the thing. So, question. Um, you have to go at. So, you would go at like ash kicking you start spelling it out brian and then it'll then it'll highlight that's that's how you do it you got to have the at sign and then name them like jimmy q said at cypress you know like here <laughs> pickles is being a smart ass so he just showed you right there perfectly like that buddy and that's how you do it it's so that you can get it you know you can notice uh, somebody saying something to you now on my chat in the show platform Whatever you call this, you know program. I don't get that highlighted to me. It doesn't show it to me So I actually turn the chat on over here. So if somebody does do uh, add dead broke barbecue, I also have another Visual that I can kind of see it, you know Yes there you go. That's perfect right there, buddy. But yeah, it'll only see the person that um, it's tagging to. And make sure not to leave a space. Correct. Very good. Very good. Yeah, I see that you did the smoke queso. Good job, Rob. Can you make me a mod so I can time out pick? <laughs> He's already a mod, so you can't time out a mod. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right, Jimmy. I mean, you got if you're working off a tablet, it's a little different than a PC. It's so much harder to do it like on your phone and all that. It's a pain in the butt. A lot easier just to do it if you're watching it. And I think uh I got this I think this guy here might have just made a nice purchase on a nice uh MacBook today. And I don't wanna say for sure, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you need super mod powers? Yeah. <laughs> One of these days, Joe, I'll make you a mod. Okay, I'll tell you what. Papa, how are you doing, buddy? You know, I, I mean, I haven't had a chance to talk to you for a while. How are you doing, buddy? Hope all is good. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Ash. Or, I mean, not Ash kicking, I mean, Darren. Yep, yep. And um, um, the, Brian has the same size noggin as me. We both have large melon heads, so, uh, it, you know, it fits real well, so... It's an XL, XXL. You know, when I came out to shoot, uh, either I got stuck in there for a while or something and the head swelled up, or uh, yeah, I'm just born gifted with a lot of brains. I can't figure it out yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Charlie. You're good at typing, though. Papa trimmed his beard, huh? I, th well, I saw something on Instagram. It didn't. Uh, maybe it was a little shorter. Maybe a little shorter. Maybe it was a little short. Yeah, he did. He did order a new laptop. Jeez, Brad. Thank you, buddy. Dang, bro. Brad's got a big addiction to uh, cookers now. He's bought quite a few in the past uh, couple weeks. 
He's, he wants to own one of every one of them, I think, so. I'm like, you're lucky your wife is like really excited about it too. My wife's always pretty good about me buying a cooker as long as I explain the reasonings why I want to buy a new cooker, you know. Of course, she always says, well, you should just wait for them to send you one for free. And I'm like, okay, I've gotten a couple of them, but that don't happen every day. Oh, yeah, I agree, Steve. That'd be really super cool. You know, one of those guys at the uh, barbecue shacks and all that. Heck, yeah. Heck, yeah. That'd be awesome, Russ. You know, all those guys that have been... You know, smoking protein for so many years, and you know, it's just their living. Yeah, that's a pretty cool thing. You know, as YouTubers, we do it because we're either backyard people or comp guys. But, but yeah, heck yeah. There you go, Russ. Hunt one of those fellers down and see how they're cooking at their shack. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, Papa. Well, thank that's okay, buddy. Thanks for stopping in, man, though. I appreciate it, bud. That's awesome. Glad to see you in here. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, you're pretty, pretty darn good on your iPad and your editing and all that. That's for sure. So remember, guys, that uh, we have, because of my youngest son, he says... Sugar Daddy is his favorite rub because he's got a little bit of a sweet tooth. Make sure on the replay that you get in there. Hashtag Daddy. Now, obviously, we have to be in the 50 states for me to be able to ship it to you. That is uh, Suckle Buster's uh, little rule that it has to be. You have to live in the United States. But, uh, but yeah, so if you're here from the uh, one of the 50, make sure you get in there and, and get yourself a chance. Just like, you know... Craig wins again. <laughs> the 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 the, uh, the the winning is getting pretty darn uh, uh, easy because it's typically the you're, these guys are repeating because it's typically the same eleven to fifteen guys. So your odds are pretty good. Wow, hey James, thanks for dropping in, buddy. How you doing, bud? I seen that you were firing up your uh, Weber kettle. I think I saw that on Instagram or Facebook or something. You're gonna do something on your Weber kettle. I hope that went great today for you. Or maybe it was yesterday, I'm not always on top of, you know, how those feeds work. Sometimes it's actually the day before, but it was nice seeing that you're on the little Weber. Somebody's drinking some bush lights, it looks like. Apple kind. Hmm. Mm. I don't know if I want, I mean, I've had an apple cider beer before. Um, that's kind of good. So maybe a bush light apple might be all right. It sounds kind of more of like a good fall time. We get in the fall. You know, a little apple, apple, apple beer is always kind of good at that time of year. Or just, you know, some good cider. A little extra punch. Ah, okay. It's good hot summer day beer. <laughs> or a breakfast beer. I know that. I know how that is, man. Every once in a while, one ends up right in front of your omelet. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Well, don't worry though, uh, Brian. If if, uh, if that apple beer turns out where they sell a ton of it, they'll keep on bringing it out every year. So, you know that's how it goes. <laughs> that PBR coffee beer is good for breakfast. Yeah, there you go. All right, all right. These beer barbecue, beer barbecue and baseball. They have a review on the Bush Light Apple. Cool.
Yeah, I don't know if PBR is really a good coffee, but it's it's fine for like when you're ice fishing all night and you're out in the out on the pond and you're doing an all nighter. It it either puts you asleep or it keeps you up because you got to go outside and take a leak every five minutes. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, Russ did a freaking fantastic job. I kind of threw some wrenches at him, some questions that, you know, but hey, he answered them all, so right on top of his game for sure. And I told him, just be ready, buddy, because I wing everything, so who knows what I'll come up with, but, you know, <laughs> but it was, I didn't come up with too many goofball ones, so. Coffee and whiskey, yeah, oh yeah. A little Irish cream. There you go. Thank you, Stephen, for posting that for those guys. I'm drinking Natural Days. Naturda Ez. days yeah I don't know I, I bloody beer it's called a bloody beer hmm. yeah I really like um, I you know it's like Russ was talking about earlier about how he um, was seeing that hot sauce uh, El Churlava El, El, El Dorado um, uh, spices wrong and I went live with uh, Nat Er Days. Oh, Nat, Nat Er Days. Okay, thanks. You know, the greatest thing about Darren when he's in here, he always helps me with my grammar. Thank you, Darren. I appreciate that. Really, because like, if it's not like spelled on hooks on hooked on phonics style, I have a hard time. Well, thanks, Russ. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. But yeah, the. Um, so Russ was kind of talking about that hot sauce where he was kind of mispronouncing it. Well, I went live on Thursday for Wine Still Sold Out, and I, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't, I've don't, i never heard of a Barolo, Bar, Barolo uh, wine. I never, I never have. I guess I just never paid a close enough attention to it. And so I'm like, man, I, I can't wait till I try this. Barola, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> or something. <laughs> Just screwed it right up. Oops, oops. But yeah, well, you know, sometimes the brain doesn't. You know, you're reading it, and it's like so easy. It's just B A R O L O. I mean, I've had Rolos before. Why couldn't I say? I had to say uh, Barola. <laughs> it's just dumb, dumbass. But whatever. Get over it, racer. Yeah, drinking some lattes. Yeah. The um, coffee beer is good. We've got a bunch of breweries around here. You know, I'm from Wisconsin, so. And the, I like a little coffee beer. A little coffee beer. Oh, well, my next cook uh, to be on video is some chicken wings. I, I'm in the editing process of that it's from that same party that big fourth of july party that i did um and it's got a it's got a very good ending ending it's pretty good yeah it's like one of those things that like you could tell it was a long day two days in a row of drinking with my good friend dale and it was a long long day uh, but yeah so it'll have a good ending i think um but the uh and then i have the burn off on the master built i did that video and i you know i i really want to do a brisket in that thing because that was kind of a whole idea of this brisket and it it just didn't work out good enough and i think but i'm just gonna run it low and slow i think i'll do a brisket on it but i i we do have some uh my wife bought some chicken breasts uh, yesterday, so I might just do some chicken breast. You know, I, I've actually cooked chicken breast in it already, and it did great. 
I gotta say, that thing for grilling is just stupid good. Um, I did some pork chops in it too, and I was really happy with that. Oh yeah, coffee rubs. They're very good, very good. Uh, Suckle Busters has a, that coffee rub that I like decent, you know, pretty good. So, just adds a little something. Well, there you go. Hey, I'll, well, sure, Brad, I'll do that. I'll drink a couple samples, sure. Thank you, sir, that'd be awesome. Yeah, well, well, I mean, it, it's a little, there's a little bit, though. I mean, you can taste, I mean, it, there's a little bit of coffee-ish flavor to it, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's I can't explain it, but, you know, but there's a little bit there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, like, funny how all these, all these, like, states now have these micro brews everywhere. And, and you got to support them. They're pretty good, you know. I always like doing it. Do a cow tongue. Yeah, I... I'm gonna do cheek. Yeah, I, I am gonna do cheek. Uh, Russ was talking about that, you know, and and that's I've said that that's one thing that I've wanted to cook for a long time. So I, I really, yeah, want to do it. <laughs> Liver and onions. There you go. I need to see a beef fajita video. Ah, all right. Well, I, maybe I'll do that, Peter. Maybe I will. Hmm, no, I can say that I've never had a steak with that. Now, um, I've had pancakes. <laughs> yeah, cheek is really, I mean, I've heard so many people say that beef cheek is just really good. And, and we have, like, our Walmart always has beef cheek. It's like, they sometimes don't have freaking ribs, but they always got beef cheek all the time. I don't know if, why, but it's popular around here, I guess. <laughs> cheek joke. There you go. <laughs> nah, you did. You okay? So Darren did some. Loved them. Cool. Very Scandinavian. Yeah, very very Scandinavian for sure. Now, that's what I heard about the the cheek. It's like just crazy tender, you know. So, come up with some IKEA meatballs. <laughs> League of Bears. There you go. That's interesting, Jimmy. IKEA meatballs. Oh, Brad, that, that was weird. Yeah, you gotta tell her, keep the damn cat off my property. <laughs> I'm ready. I am ready for some duck tongue tacos, man. Just sounds cool though. I mean, it really does. But I'm just like trying to think of like how big a duck tongue is. I mean, I mean, maybe a goose tongue, but I don't know. A duck, that's pretty funny. Nice. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm Norwegian and Dane myself. I'm a, I say I'm a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. So I'm a quarter Norwegian, quarter Dane. Quarter German and quarter Irish. So, what a messy, messy bloodline that is. Yeah. Okay. I I can't wait to see it. I really. I mean, it's pretty darn big. I must like kind of go back into it. You know, deep. You know. So weird. And whoever decided to like start smoking them and making them into like tacos and stuff like that. That's really cool.
Yeah, there you go. Reporter to PETA for unleashing her bird assassin on the local flocks. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, tell 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 her that I've seen your cat kill birds. Hogheads cheese, oh yeah, beef tongue. Pickled, you I mean you can't hardly even go into a tavern around here without pickled pig feet. Yeah, I like pickled turkey gizzards too. Get them right in a tavern. Oh yeah, around here they'd have them right there. Pretty funny all the time, you know. Some good old, you know. And, uh, God, what else do they have? Pickled, pickled, pickled eggs, obviously. Gizzards. Yeah, everything. Always funny. Yeah, every once in a while, my grandma used to fry up gizzards. You know, and they're like so, like, chewy. You know, crazy chewy, but, yeah, they're always good. Little, you know... Just a little bit there for a little appetizer. <laughs> That's right. A hundred years ago, everything was eaten. Figured out something for something, that's for sure. Jeez, Brad, you've had some really experiences the last couple weeks. <laughs> Cat jumped on the smoker. Yeah, they are. Pick, uh, pickled pig's feet, they, they are a good thing to have once in a while, that's for sure. You know, get them and throw them on a paper plate and have your, you know, shorty sit or tap her glasses and pound them down. <laughs> yeah, but most of those guys make that into sausage, though, you know. I, I actually gave a lot of my trimmings away to a buddy that makes sausages, so, you know, he's always like, doing that, so. I just don't ever get enough of it. Uh, in the videos, I might get a little bit, um, you know, I... How do I explain it? You know, what, what what am I getting? Pork butt? I don't really trim a lot off of pork butt. I don't get a lot. Uh, brisket I get pretty aggressive on. I really butcher that down. But, uh, you know, typically I think that, uh, you know, if, if you take that scrap and put it away in the freezer and make yourself up some sausage, you know, it's always good. It's really good. My dad used to make it all the time. I need to do it too. Hey Rick, thanks for coming back, buddy. How you doing, man? Appreciate you coming back in. <laughs> Hangover tripe. All right, good job. Well, that means the business is grow to, growing, buddy. Good job. Way to sell out, man. <laughs> Mexican pizza.
Hmm. Yeah, whenever whenever you can figure that you can sell out, man, that's just incredible, you know. I mean, Rick, you don't have any, you know, dinner, but then you can get something different than what you cook, and sometimes that's always fun, you know. Wood fire oven, nice. Oh yeah, there's truth there, man. I think um, when I went down in high school, or no, I was 1984, yeah, so it must have been eighth grade or high school. Um, went down to Texas, and that was the first time that I really had like a Tex-Mex type of food, and wow, I was sold on it right right away. Probably the first time I had brisket too. thing on the pizza might scare me a little bit Rick but but uh yeah <laughs> yeah Russ we got the same thing we actually have one one Mexican restaurant um it's a newer one and that's actually pretty darn good um they don't just have just the fajitas and all that type of stuff, so it's kind of actually kind of kind of good. Um, yeah, some weird stuff that I haven't, you know, I can I can't ever pronounce anything. I, I, like I said or said before, if it's not like a Norwegian type of thing, like Olson Johnson, you know, it's hard for me to pronounce it. But, but yeah, we, we there's a new uh, really good. We went there twice now, my wife and I. Pretty decent food. Now, the regular ones around here, they're okay, but... Yeah, you get that... This is maybe a little bit more... That Tex-Mex style, the one that this new one, but it's still damn good. Nice! Yeah, that peach rub is pretty darn good. I like the peach rub. <laughs> Taco Bell. I can't even eat at Taco Bell anymore. I ain't lying to you. I, I can't even eat at Taco Bell anymore. I, I think they've they've lost. It's just just not the same. You know, back in the eighties and nineties, you know, it was okay. Now, it's like dog poop. I'd rather have a McDonald's McChicken sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, there's some truth to that. There's some truth to that, Darren. Yeah. I'm always, when I was younger, I was always notorious for like, hey, you know, come home from the tavern, it's been a long night. And then uh, start up the oven, throw a pizza on, you know, throw it in there, sit on the couch, pass, pass right out on the couch. And then about three, four hours later, wake up because the, the alarm's going off because you just burnt your pizza. Damn it. And you know, it's always the time when you only had one in there. Or one in the freezer. Dang it. So then you just, like, chug some milk. And you know, for, for me, I'm going to grab a piece of sausage and a piece of cheese, and I'm done. Oh, yeah, we had Shakey's back in the day. Shakey's Pizza. Really? A seven layer burrito? <laughs> it's true to that too, Grumpus. Who can afford Taco Bell anymore? God. Hey, hey, there he is. Chris from Eastwood. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining. No, Taco Bell's not. Oh, Charlie, I don't eat a lot of fast food either, you know, I, I really don't. Um, you know, when I'm traveling for a long time is, you know, like five hour trip or something like that. 
I'm always trying to like find a restaurant that looks okay in a different town, and I'd rather just go into a cafe and order eggs for lunch, to be honest with you, than go through McDonald's. But sometimes you're just, unfortunately, it's a chicken sandwich and a large Coke. Two chicken sandwiches and a large Coke. I only eat Chipotle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Chipotle isn't. Yeah. I've never eaten at a Chipotle. Never. And what's that other Pan Pandora's box bread or something like that? Pantera or whatever. I went in there one time. And I had, I was so confused by their menu. Hey Russ, you bet buddy. Thanks for joining me. Awesome. Great show. I really appreciate it. Have a great night. Get Edmund. Can't wait till I see the duck tongue uh, tacos. I'm pretty excited to hear that one. So that's pretty cool. You have a, you have a wonderful week, buddy. And I hope it's, I hope you don't get any more storms. I hope it just kind of like cool, you know, things settle down so you can, so you can get back to making some videos again. So, but hey, at least you got one out today. So, have a great night, buddy. Hmm, I didn't know Chipotle was owned by McDonald D's. Yeah, Pandera bread, Panera, Panera bread. Yeah, I, I was just standing there, like looking at their menu, and they were like, and I think what I ended up, yeah, that good Quadobo. We got a bunch of those around here. They got one that's like a Kodobo grill or something. Kukwadaba. Yeah, and it was, it was, it was the grill thing was pretty cool. Um, yeah, yes, that's what uh, Laura. That Russ is making a video on duck tongue tacos. He's gonna do that pretty soon. It's coming up real soon. But yeah, so I sat in that Pandora place or Panera, and like. I ended up just like I think ordering some donuts or something or some piece of bread or something because or bagel or something stupid I don't even remember but I was like don't you have any pictures of this crap I mean I gotta see what the hell it looks like I might, I might have got it one of those paninis things you know or something too but I was so confused in that restaurant I'm not very good when I go to those type of places you know, where's the steak yeah. <laughs> Where's your your Friday night fish fry? Damn it! You know. Hey, Johnny, how you doing, buddy? I gotta get over there and check out your um, your guru video. I didn't have a chance to do that yet, man. I was gonna try to do it yesterday, and while well, we had, I cooked a brisket, and then we were I was. Me and my boys were running over to my friend's house, uh, hang out with him for a little bit, so just did not have a chance. Uh, and then today it was one of those days where it was get crap done around the house. Yeah, it is a little bit confusing. To me, it's just weird. <laughs> Stare. Oh, it's starring me. Okay, all right, well. I, I, I promised. I, I mean, I saw it flash up, dude, and I'm like, I gotta watch this, but I want to watch it, watch it. So, yeah, thank you, buddy. Yeah, I know. I need, I need to get over there. I, I mean, I saw it. It's just how it worked that I wasn't able to sit down. <laughs> really? That that makes sense, Ray. Because maybe I went there when they got cute. Because um, I don't know. To me, it was just confusing, you know. Hey, how you doing, Eric? Thanks for joining me, brother. Glad to see you here, bud. You know, it's like uh, one heck of a heck of a interview with Russ today, and um, you know, he's just fun. He's just one of those guys that you just—I could have kept him on longer, to be honest with you. But I'm like, I know he had things to do, and I hate dragging out the the guest too long, you know, so.
There you go, Charlie. Yeah, you're kind of cute. For a hillbilly style guy. You know, you're cute. You got that low voice. Yeah. I could see you making bread. <laughs> okay, I will try that out. I've, see, I've seen it, people eating soup in the bread bowl. It looked good. My wife went there a couple times and she said, It's good. What are you talking to me? I'm like, Oh, whatever. Um, I might do a little bit of that, Julie. Um, my grandma Rice was uh, a, a really, really good cook. My grandma Virgin, which is on the Norwegian side, incredible baker, you know, but their food. Like I said, I think said to Russ is that uh, black pepper was spicy to my grandpa. <laughs> so their food was so bland. My dad would always bring a bottle of uh, Tabasco sauce to the house when he'd go eat there. He's like, well, oh, she's making chicken. So he'd spray it down. <laughs> but, but, but her baking stuff, oh, God. Some, like her banana pie and her... The banana bread and all that type of stuff was really good. Yeah, I mean, like, right now that, like, with... I kind of was talking about that with Russ. was like, you know, being, you've been a YouTuber for eight years. Have you ever really ran out of things? And he's not. There's a lot of things that he wants to do. And I think that's kind of what happens, like, when you're doing the YouTube thing. You get a new cooker, you want to do all the kind of things that people want to do when they get this new cooker, and you sometimes don't do some of these like different like family recipes that are good and you can make make stuff, but I will someday. Um, you know, the Norwegian side, you know, we, him and I were talking there about the, the pork belly ribs, you know. So, they were good, they are good. Hey, Todd! From Dad Incredible. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. The, 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 there's that's so true. Uh, Betty Crocker. Uh, everybody in my family had a Betty Crocker cookbook, and they all cooked with, like like her, you know. So. I mean, it's like awesome that, like, I have a sweet tooth because of the Norwegian part of me, and man, I there's sometimes I just miss like my grandma's like cookies. And it sounds so dumb, but it really, her cookies were so much better than any cookies that I've ever had in my life, and it's probably because she's shortening in them and I'm just did different things, you know, whatever. But yeah, I. You know, but my grandma Bestel was, she could make an awesome freaking roast duck. Wow. So I haven't done a, a duck on my channel yet. And that was one thing I was going to do during the winter time, but um, I couldn't get one. They had them, and I'm like, oh, I'll wait till next week. They're <laughs> freaking sold out. Well, that's a seasonal thing. We won't have them again. I'm like, oh, piss on it then. But I am going to do some. Oh yeah, uh, Chris's game cam. I mean, coyotes. I thought I saw a fox. All the deer, cats, kitties. You had killer one. You have the killer one. All right, all right. We'll talk about that. Maybe we'll meet on the border. Oh yeah, I I love duck. I love. You got a freezer full of them, yeah. You know, like my when I was younger, my cousins and I we used to always go duck hunting all the time. And I think some of the the best duck that we had was when we'd marinate them in like a good tomatoy sauce, and then put them in a, like one of those oven bags and then cook them up. That was always really really good. Um, but yeah, I mean, my wife had roast duck last weekend. And I talked a little bit about that. That was so damn good. So damn good. Mm-hmm. The big thing with duck is always that fat underneath that skin. You got to poke that, that skin get that fat out of there. 
Mmm. Cured duck in coconut milk. That sounds really interesting, buddy. <laughs> well, Brad, you you know, you're just going to have to like get your um um take one a picture of one of your cookers. Yeah, I know you got a couple new ones that are coming that are pretty cool, and then you can just use that as your logo. Instead of just the the green man in the in the box circle. That's pretty simple to do, dude. Oh yeah. Krumpus, you can you can low and slow a duck. You just might at the end have to crank it up just a little bit, but um that, that, that it, but you just poke that skin. That's what my grandma used to do all the time. She'd sit there with poke that skin a lot and get all that so it just as it rendered it would start running right down that skin and she put stuff on the outside too to crisp it up a little bit too helps and duck spray works good for crisping up wings for sure mm-hmm yeah, score the skin. Some people score it. Yep, yep. I've seen it multiple different ways. You know, um, she just went. She had like like I don't know some like little machine thing. You know, just go right along all the. So it was get poked pretty good, but yeah, I've seen other people they'll score it. Yes, exactly, Darren. You gotta, you gotta get it a little high heat at the end, or it's the skin's really, bleh, you know. Yeah, pretty much. Krampus like a, like a, like a low and slow reverse sear. Yeah, you acquired it. You acquired it. So next week's guest, for all you guys that are in here, we're actually having uh, Harry Seuss coming on next week. So, so we have another big hitter coming in. Um, pretty excited about getting Harry on. Um, I mean, he, he he's he's a champion, you know. Champion is a freaking comp judge. And one heck of a backyard barbecue or two. So, so it's pretty fun to get Harry Sue on next week. Yeah, so, um, you know, he's he's a very friendly guy. And I'm excited to have him on. So, we got, uh, you know, Russ comes in, then Harry. And there's a couple other guys, but... I. Don't know 100% yet, but there's a couple of other bigger channels that are coming in too. Bigger cook guys are coming in, so. But yeah, so Harry's gonna come on, so make sure when you guys come in, bring your Weber questions, you know, Smoky Mountain questions and all that type of stuff, you know, obviously. Yeah, yes, you know, and make sure you tell everybody too, you know, that uh, 
that he's going to be up. So, uh, you know, it's like he's, uh, you know, what I mean, he's just one of those guys that's like amazing. Like, he's like if you ever watch, like, when he'd go to a comp, he'd pack up his three Weber Smoky Mountains, all beat the crap because he's used them so many times. And it's just amazing. It is amazing to me. You know, and then you look in his garage. I think there's a few times he shows in his garage. He's got so many trophies. You know, to do is like, she almost take some of those and like recycle. <laughs> you know, give them back. Say, hey, you can use this one next year. So we're gonna get Charlie on the show again one of these days. Yeah, smoke fire questions. That's a, a, a oh hello Grant how you doing buddy? Thanks for dropping in man. But yeah so um, that that bullseye is a really nice little cooker. I want one of those too. <laughs> I will. I certainly will. I'm doing good, Grant. I'm doing really good, buddy. You know, we're all kind of dealing with, like, the COVID stuff, you know, but, hey, it's loosening up. It has been, you know, around the state of Wisconsin, so it's not too bad, but, you know, it's still there and it sucks, but oh well. But I'm glad to see you drop in, bud. Appreciate that. Yeah, so Harry Sue next week. That's a big follow-up, man. I mean, I knew if... We're, you know, we're going to have back-to-back, like, superhero YouTuber cooks. So, you know, we had the two big, two big, two big metal-carrying guys, man. So, boys are doing good. They're doing real good. The youngest got to play a little baseball this year. The oldest, well, that didn't go so well. But uh, they're doing good, Grant. Real good. You know, I'm working them, like I always do, to the bone. My people. That's what my people. So, all right. Well, we are a little bit over right now, but I ran a little bit longer with uh, Russ, and what a great conversation that was for sure. And I hope all of you guys, every one of you, has a fantastic weekend and I'll see you back again next week I mean we got to slap your dad slap your daddy Harry Sue I always want to say slap your mama but uh, yeah so he's gonna be on and bring some questions for him I mean he's a really 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 like energetic person so uh, we're gonna get some really good some really really good conversation on it for sure <laughs> All right. Yeah, enjoy that cigar, Laura. You guys have a great one. We're going to shut her down. Thank you, Grumpus. I appreciate it. I'm glad. And again, thank you all to you, to all of you for hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciate it. It was epic for sure. So, and just remember, just don't forget, um, hashtag daddy, okay? So get in there. And get yourself a chance. You got to live in the States, but get yourself a chance to win a shaker. All right. All right, everybody. Here we go. It's closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Thank you so much for joining Ricer on Barbecue Tavern Talk. Before you go, make sure you hit that thumbs up or hit the thumbs down. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Hit the notification ringy bell. All of those YouTube things. Action figures sold separately. Batteries not included. If symptoms persist, seek medical attention. Only one per household. Call toll-free number before digging. Caution, filling is hot.
Do not fold, spindle, or mutilate. Do not remove tag under penalty of law. Refrigerate after opening. In the unlikely event of a water landing. Hey Jason, if you can hear me, thanks for stopping in, buddy. I missed you earlier. <laughs>